so far we've seen that nominal wages uh, are quite rigid. Uh, what I mean that there's a good amount of workers who get nominal wage freeze from year to year. Even more uh, present in the data is real wage uh, rigidity. We saw that there's even more workers who get real wage freeze from year to year. And we saw that this real wage rigidity was present both in existing relationship and in so existing employment relationship as well as in new employment relationships when you look at the real wage offered by uh, vacancies. Um, but in a sense, that's not, um, that's not sufficient to conclude that uh, wages are, are uh, rigid in the sense that really matters uh, in our models. Um, so when we talk about real wage rigidity in matching model, what we have in mind is how wages are going to respond to underlying shocks to um, the productivity, for instance, of a worker. And real wages are going to be rigid when real wages do not respond one for one to shocks to uh, worker productivity. So this is very similar to uh, what we discussed uh, when we looked at price rigidity, the fact that the price doesn't change doesn't really tell you anything about price rigidity. What you want to know is how the price is going to respond when we know that there is a shock to marginal cost. So you care about pass-through. The same is true for real wages. The fact that the real wage doesn't change is not so informative if we don't know how the real wage responds to a shock to productivity. That's really what we care about real wages are going to be rigid if they do not respond fully to a change in productivity. They'll be flexible if whenever there is a change in productivity, they're going to respond uh, one for one. Um, so that's what that's what we really um, care about. And that's the, really like the sort of wage rigidity that will matter in our models. So now we're going to look at a very nice paper by um, FK, um Sontag and uh, Thijs van Rens, which was published in the JME in 2013. Um, that looks exactly at, at that. So they are following, uh, they are looking at how the uh, real wage paid to new workers is going, uh, is going to change when there is a change in that worker's productivity or the productivity associated uh, with a job. Uh, and so this is a highlight from their papers that uh, I've brought back. Um, so it's looking at newly hired workers that's because we know that wages tend to be you know, uh, quite rigid in existing relationships. So here they are looking at new relationships where we suspect there may be more uh, flexibility. Of course, as we already discussed, what you need to know is uh, so the full picture is both what happens to new and existing relationship, but actually in this paper, um, they are going to look at both, which will allow us to have a, a complete picture of what happens to real wages in, you know, over the time of the entire uh, relationship. Um, so they find, of course, evidence of long-term wage contracting. That means that in existing relationship, you seem to have very stable wages. Um, they do find that wages of new hire respond to change in productivity. So that means that wages are not real wages are not completely fixed. There is some flexibility, but the question, of course, is how much. And the key result here, uh, the key result here is this: that they find an elasticity of 0.8 uh, to be an appropriate calibration target for search models. So what that means is that the elasticity. This is really the key result of real wages uh, with respect to productivity is about 0 0.8. Um, so this is one of the uh, this is one of the key results here, um, and. So this is um, the elasticity of real wages in new relationship. And that's about 0 0.8. Um, but of course, given that productivity in a given relationship is roughly uh, a random walk, um, this is going to translate also 
to uh, the elasticity of the wage over the entire period of the relationship. Um, so actually, that, you know, there is no no real difference between the elasticity of wages in new relationship and the elasticity of wages over the entire duration of the relationship. Um, so anyway, so that's a key thing. Now, here as I conclude after that, that wage rigidity is not likely to be the sole reason for employment. Volatility is that, you know, I disagree with that. Um, as I've shown, you know, I've, I've found in my work, um, if you have an elasticity of 0.8 um, for real wages with respect to productivity, actually what you can show is that this is um, sufficient uh, to generate A realistic unemployment uh, fluctuations. Uh, so actually, this, this is uh, this is exactly sufficient. Uh, what I show, what I had showed in my um, job market paper, uh, is that so in my job market paper, the calibration I had was an elasticity of real wage with respect to productivity of 0.7 because that was based on an earlier version of their paper, and that generates uh, enough fluctuation. You know that generates an unemployment fluctuation that are even larger, a little bit larger than what we see in the US. If you uh, if you use instead an elasticity of 0.8 instead of 0.7, so a bit more flexibility, you get exactly the type of fluctuation that you see in the US. Uh, so that's what's quite striking that you don't need actually much rigidity to generate large fluctuations in uh, in unemployment. Uh, but anyway, so the bottom line is that you know in the same way that the path through of marginal cost into prices was less than one, which is an evidence of price rigidity. Here, if you want the path through of real wages, um, this is basically the path through of uh, productivity into real wages. And that's, uh, that's the key thing that we need to measure. It's strictly less uh, than one, and therefore that will give us a bit of rigidity to work with, and that will generate fluctuations in the matching models that we we'll use. Right. So here is the evidence, the key table in their paper. Um, so this is looking at the response of wages to productivity. What's very nice is that it's comparing old workers and new hires, so that we can see a little bit, because as we said, what matters is really the wage, how wages change over the entire duration of the relationship, so both upon being hired and then as the worker keeps on working with the firm. So you really need to have both pieces of evidence to get the complete picture. Um, and they compare both wage per workers and um, earning per workers. Um, and you know this is just for completeness, but there's not um, too much uh, too much difference. So there's wage per hour, the hourly rate, and earnings per person. Um, and so what are the key results? So you can see, I guess, two things. So first, so the key thing that will be interesting is the elasticity with respect to productivity for the real wage. Um, that's really, that's going to be the key parameter in our model. That's the equivalent of, of the path through that we looked at for prices. So a couple of things that we see. So first of all, you can see that the elasticity for all workers is always less than the elasticity for new hires. So that's, a, uh, that's kind of a, an interesting result and something that uh, a lot of people anticipated. So here we see more rigidity for uh, basically existing workers. Although um, the other evidence we discussed earlier didn't find more rigidity for nominal wages by comparing existing to new relationships. So here we find more rigidities, um, but uh, at least in nominal terms, that wasn't the case uh, in the Hazel papers that we had mentioned. Um, so anyway, it, it looks like the evidence is a little bit mixed. It's if anything, wages for existing workers are a bit more rigid, but it's not clear how much more. Um, so we have more rigidity here in any case for existing workers. And then uh, the key piece of evidence, of course, is that all of these things, all of these elasticities that we have here, 
are less than one. And so all of this is evidence of uh, rigidities. Because an elasticity of just one would be a flexible width wedge, but we can see that here, anyway you look at it, you have an elasticity that's less than one. And the 0 0.8 we mentioned earlier, uh, it comes from uh, this and this here. Um, so for the elasticity of either earnings or wages with respect to productivity for new hires. Um, and then, so of course, this is combining looking at new hires, all workers. Then the question, as we said, what really matters is really the, how we can, when a worker, uh, when a firm decides to post a vacancy, they know what the productivity is and what they really care about is how they can, how the pay that they'll pay the worker during the entire relationship can be expected to change. And so this nice paper by uh, F. Kern Coaters actually deal with that. Uh, and so as a flag, you know, what we care about is fluctuation is a net present value of wages because at the time when the firm posts a vacancy, that's what they really care about and how the net present value of wages compares to productivity. Uh, so that's exactly what they say. Uh, Wage setting only matters insofar as it affects the response of the permanent way to changes in permanent productivity. Um, you know, what you really, you don't care about the wage in a given period because the firm knows that they are engaged in a long-term relationship. Uh, and so the specific path of how wages change is not relevant. What you care about is the present value. Um, so Pisaides uh, made that point uh, very clearly in this 2009 paper. Um, and but so here, as uh, what we learned nevertheless is that estimated wages in ongoing wage contracts are close to random work. So basically, the wage in an entire relationship will be determined by the wage uh, by the wage at the beginning of the relationship. So that's really the key finding here: is that the elasticity of the present value of wage is close to the elasticity of the wage for newly uh, for newly hired workers. Because once you set that wage, after that, all fluctuations will be roughly random work. So there'll be no drift. Uh, here. And so that's why the 0 0.8 that we find for new hires is a good actually um, target to use to calibrate the wage in all the, in the entire relationship. Um, here we find that an um, elasticity is strictly less than one and that's enough actually to get uh, a lot of fluctuations. That's going to be enough to get a lot of fluctuations in, in uh, unemployment. Um, 